I just came back from Figma's conference config and there are so many updates to share. AI features to come. Let's talk a bit about it. Let's talk a bit about what it means to be a designer from here on out in this AI era. Also Genius AI, which is funny because can you believe I made a video about Genius AI back in February? Now we know why they never launched because they got acquired. Let's review some of the AI features that Figma has, well, will be rolling out. So let's jump in. If you'd like to see this talk for yourself, this was from Thursday or day two, and this talk is called AI and the Future of Design. The reason I want to start off with essentially what the VP of Design, No11, says here is because they acknowledge that introducing a lot of these AI tools, it will speed up design. Uh, so let's see what he says, and I'll share my thoughts on it a little bit after. And I think AI will both raise the ceiling, unleashing new heights, more creative outputs, more amazing products, but it will also lower the floor making it easier to design and allowing anyone to collaborate visually. And this is a shift we're pretty familiar with at Figma. The reason I want to highlight this point of the talk is because they are saying, hey, we realize that introducing AI into this space will make it easier for a lot of other people to start designing. So what does this mean? How are we thinking about it? If a lot of people are able to become designers and easily designed with these AI tools, what core skills should we be thinking about now versus later? I'll talk about that a little bit later on in this video, but let's go into the features that Figma is going to be rolling out. Let's start with brainstorming. Here, AI can help us collaborate, generate ideas, cluster them, organize, synthesize. Here, you can imagine getting help thinking of an icebreaker for a team meeting, or organizing and clustering your ideas for you. These large language models are really good at this, right? Making sense of large sets of information or summarizing information from a big conversation that had so many inputs, right? And what those next steps might be. So what about designing? So right there, we just saw the capability of AI being able to summarize, summarize large amounts of content. This is an amazing capability, especially when you are brainstorming with a big team. Maybe you have a workshop of like 12 people or larger, and you're trying to really quickly glean the insights what are the commonalities in the ideas within the workshop, for example? Fascinating development. Hopefully this feature rolls out, but we'll see. Let's take a look at what they had and shared for design. As Dylan alluded to yesterday, there's so much we can do here. It can allow us to get started faster, deepen possibilities in our explorations, allow us to put pieces together in more coherent and thoughtful flows. And so here's an example where AI can tap into the existing wealth of your design systems, the, what's on the screen at different pages, and surface component recommendations for you to build upon. So in this example, it's digesting the screen and suggesting these album covers and filling in the content for you as well, saving you a lot of time and exploring these different patterns from things that might already be in your system. Crazy. So yeah, we've seen AI in other places suggest content, maybe with ChatGPT, hey, write a bio piece for me for my website or write some initial copy for my website. I think it's smart and timely for Figma to think about this and where its potential lies within the whole design process. Start exploring AI can help you stay in the flow. And I find a lot of times I forget to look for plugins that can help me. And so what if instead you prompt for something and we chain together different plugins that can help you. So here, pulling a color palette from an image and then chaining it into showing a set of a style guide, the first draft of one of these. There are tons of plugins. I'm curious to how the AI will sort of find the best one. I'd be curious to see like what's the like logic behind there, whether it's rated on reviews or times used. This is also really great in speeding up a process, for example, by leaning into the community and what's already been developed. And nothing stifles your flow and imagine, imagination more than tedious tasks. And so here you can see AI helping with common actions. I feel like all of us have spent way too much time doing this. Let me tell you, the crowd in that moment was super loud. Lots of people were clapping and I felt the struggle from some of the designers within the crowd. So what does this mean? How is this speeding us up? It's like a prompt to create all these, these states of a button. And this is fascinating because it, it removes the repetitive process of having to do this over and over and over again. This would be crazy if this feature could be used to build a design system. I'm curious. I'd want to push it to see if it can go that far, but I'm curious to explore this feature out. I know this one blew minds, but moving faster here really means, okay, what are some of the most repetitive work that we've done? States. We have so much information on states, best practices, what they are, lots of design systems to really learn from and standards. This almost felt like a no brainer 
for Figma to include. Super excited, can't wait for this one. We think about how designs translate across devices and regions, AI can give you a starting point to build upon. For example, you can prompt Figma to show designs across different device sizes, languages, themes, building upon all the things that you already saw yesterday with variables. If you saw Framer AI, you can now essentially prompt to create a design that already produces a tablet view and a mobile design already. So this also seemed like if Figma didn't launch this, it would it would kind of be missing in that in that area, but incredible. I think this really, as I mentioned before, really takes the repetitive process of, hey, utilizing best practices, components that are stackable and can readily be made into a tablet view or a mobile view. I want to, I'd want to personally push this one to see like what, how the mobile turns out, but I trust Figma. I think that this will come out to be something really great and remove the process of having to create those extra screens, making it a lot easier for us to move faster and iterate faster allowing our creative juices to keep going. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but when I'm on a variation, like when I'm on one idea, I all of a sudden get like 10 ideas. And I just like wanna hurry up with one idea so I can move on to the next one. Really great, even still for design and also really brainstorming initially. Curious to see if this works with wireframes, initial like gray boxes. So I can't wait for this to be released, to, to push it a little bit more. Let's keep going. And you heard a bunch about this yesterday with the announcement of Dev Mode. AI can help us contribute and understand how we move from a design into something real, whether that's through helping you in communication and handoff, working with developers with code, or as I've refer heard referred to as the holy grail, like matching components in code to components in Figma. And so let's take a look. With the new VS Code app, you can imagine how much more powerful it becomes with AI. For example, generating code based on selections in the file or finding existing code references that are similar to the selection that you've made that already exists somewhere in your code base. All right, let me pause there because this was mind blowing as well. I'm curious to see how true this is. If it can really by selection create that code for you. I'm gonna lean into probably because there's so many products being built on Figma. They probably have the insights and also there's so many best practice. How big a mobile screen is like we know we have these. Go into the inspect tool. You'll see like the standard sort of screen sizes that we utilize and stuff. So it's just fascinating to see this come together. And I'm curious to see how many designers this will encourage or sort of like inspire to start learning how to code or if designers will start being uh, picking up just some co more code along the way. I'm just curious, but this is really fascinating. I also kind of want to know if in regards to a design system, if this requires some design system pre-built or I just have so many questions. Let's keep going. This would be super helpful or updating small tweaks in the design based on things that you maybe modified in a Figma file and just getting a quick change to that right away. And again, these are just ideas and we're super excited to dive deeper this year. And finally, there's this process by which we work together through these phases, this collaborative iterative process. And along this entire journey, there's places in the process we can help people understand the context of a file, help communicate across our roles and discover important work. And so in this prototype, imagine you've just come out of a crit or a product review and there were hundreds and hundreds of comments. It happens all the time and it's a little overwhelming, but AI can help summarize them, make it easier. The last feature to come, Genius AI and how it will be integrated. So let me just speed ahead. Genius AI, which I reviewed months ago. Here on the stage, actually, if you watch the whole talk, um, they talk about their long and lengthy process of creating these ideas, the ideas they had along the way and how they got to Genius AI and how Genius AI will be, or so we think it will be integrated into Figma. Let's take a look at what they have in mind. Genius Chat. This is just a really early look, um, but I wanted to show a little bit about some of our thinking about letting you talk to Genius in a more direct way to say what you want and then let it give feedback to you. So what if we could bring the magic that is ChatGPT into the Figma canvas? Here's an example. So you could talk to Genius about your screen, it can help you, and then it can actually edit your file. So let's go to a demo. Here I have a music app that I'm working on, and I would like to quickly just add some songs. So there's a list item that's in my design system, and I can just go to the Genius chat and type in, add some imaginary songs. And it's gonna give me some direct feedback 
Um, you might also notice it has a little bit more personality than ChatGPT, using some emojis and being a little more sort of what I expect designers might want to interact with. And then it's gone in and changed my file here. And it's added a few different list items. It's pulled the component in, filled in the text, and it's done it right inside of Figma. Crazy. This is an AI assistant, which they previously talked about when they were thinking of launching Genius AI. I wonder if they were just testing to see if there was any interest at first, way back in February when they had announced it and announced that it was going, going to go somewhere, going to publicly launch, but it didn't. Now we know why. I think this could be really useful for lots of designers, no matter what level you're at. It's just amazing how the Genius AI can also edit your file. So it's not, it's not only assisting you with some ideas, it's going ahead and putting that into your design. And I think that's fascinating. I'm gonna play the rest of this clip. Let's look at another thing here. So I just have a basic screen and I wanna add some copy. So I can just select the screen. I don't need to say where, it sort of knows. And then say, okay, let's add some copy. This is not sped up, this is like real time. And boom, we have some copy. I think one of the things that's most interesting to me, and I've been hearing, um, hearing this from people at Config already, is people use ChatGPT in their design process already, and they ask for advice. So one of the really interesting things we could do is like let Genius see what you have in your file, and then let you ask a question. So imagine I'm sort of a beginning designer and trying to figure out like, like what are important design considerations. I can just ask a question. So it's like, where should I add a search bar? And then it gives me some feedback and suggests putting it on the title bar, which you know is reasonable and you know not the most uh, crazy thing. But yeah, here we go. So lastly, I just want to sort of close with another possibility that Genius Chat could also help connect you to things outside of Figma itself. So in this example, we can sort of pull in other APIs or experiences directly into the chat, just as they're needed. So here I'm working on a glyph inside of my design. It's called out to the glyphs model, and it's generated some options, and I can just respond in the chat to sort of complete that. So that's what we have to show. Glyphs are another product that Diagram had been working on previously. All of these sneak peeks were really to be honest, they were jaw dropping even in person. So now I'm gonna share some of my thoughts of what I think about the future of AI means for designers and how we can best prepare, just like more so my brain dump of what I thought after this conference. It had me thinking, what does this mean for entry level designers who are maybe focused earlier on pushing pixels in their career versus senior level designers that are really leaning into maybe strategy and designing less? So here are my thoughts, just really a brain dump of what I think will be important if you want to stay competitive in the product design industry as an entry level designer, for example. Understanding business of design is going to be ever more important because you really need to nail how your design meets business goals as well as user needs. Oftentimes when starting out, we really want to be the advocates for our users and we absolutely should be. But sometimes I've noticed as a mentor of design boot camps, this could mean we over index on the empathy and forgetting about the business goals and really the return of investment of design. Business acumen earlier on in your career will be so beneficial for you to nail earlier on than later. Honing your soft skills, such as communication, collaboration, critical thinking. These are essential for building a product which really takes more than one person. So being able to articulate your design decisions earlier on will put you ahead of the game when it comes time to interview, when it comes time to present your ideas, when it time comes to get that aligned to take your idea to the next step. Effective communication never hurts. And if this is something you're currently struggling with, I definitely recommend picking up this book, Articulating Design Decisions, because it leans into the different types of communicating you will do depending on the person you are communicating with on your team and what's important to them. With all these AI tools, I also thought this would be a really great time to niche down into maybe a new area, an emerging field like augmented reality, for example, which is still relatively new up and coming, especially with Apple's new headset, becoming an expert in a certain area, for example, say all of these AI tools for one and seeing how companies can utilize them to speed up processes or solve some of their problems can help you by making you the expert in that field so that you can offer unique insights to clients or your teammates. Maybe you can introduce some new processes or frameworks, things to consider, ethical considerations for one, which brings me into the next consideration. 
Ethical design considerations. As AI becomes more prevalent in design, it's crucial to understand the implications, honestly, societal impact of AI and what it will bring. Developing a strong ethical framework that considers factors like privacy, inclusivity, and bias is going to be really important as we enter this new era of AI. Here's one that I think will remain but will be growing more of importance. Emotional intelligence, empathy. I think that human-centered design will become more important in terms of making sure we don't forget about the people we are designing and building for. So when you start off more junior, you are maybe pushing pixels, and when you move later on, like senior and, and levels beyond, you're more focusing on strategy and really the big picture of the company. Strategy will be ever more important earlier on in the career of a product designer, UX designer. Lastly, but kind of not lastly, because I hate cutting things off. I think this list is, it will be growing. Growth mindset. In this field, having a growth mindset now more than ever is gonna be very important as we're moving a lot faster. Working in tech means that tech evolves, but we are now seeing changes happen even faster than we ever have before. So staying up to date with some of these tools, the trends is gonna be increasingly more important for a lot of us. Staying up to date will always keep you competitive in this evolving landscape. These are just my thoughts I thought I'd share on where I'm at and, and what I'm thinking as a senior product designer. I would love to know what you're thinking, so leave some comments. I'll get back to them as soon as I can. For now, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.